Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video I'm going to continue the series on the Queen's Indian defense and we are going to have a look at the most complicated, the most common and objectively best variation for both sides, which is considered to be the main line. Now, this variation is actually called the Nimtsovich variation. It got named after Aaron Nimtsovich, who is the first player that played that move. Uh, but today it's known as the modern main line or as the main line. And that's the move bishop to a6 on move 4 for black. I'm going to show you how to reach that position. I just like to say that the old main, li main line, which is bishop to b7 instead of bishop a6, used to be played before the 1930s and it was the main move. And it was still probably more popular than bishop a6 up until 20 or 30 years ago. But lately the move bishop a6 uh, has overtaken the title of the main line in the Queen's Indian. So how do we, we reach the position? So white plays the move d4, black plays the move knight to f6, we have c4, e6, and now of course for those of you who play the Queen's Indian, you know that you could be facing three different opening systems by white here. Uh, one is the Catalan after g3. I would recommend going for the main lines of the open Catalans with d5 takes on c4 and then a6. Uh, the other, probably the most popular option, is uh, a, an invitation to the Nimtso Indian, where I would recommend simply going for that with bishop to b4 and trying to get the Queen's Indian setup. And finally, the move knight f3, allowing the Queen's Indian and b6. And in this position, uh, the other moves white could go for instead of the main line, which is g3, we're going to have a look at later. So those are a3, knight c3, e3, bishop f4, and bishop g5. Today we are going to focus on the move g3, which is the main move. And as I said, black has two options, bishop b7, the old main line, which we are going to have a look at in the next video. And today we are going to focus on bishop a6. Now, uh, there are two ideas behind this move. It may seem quite simple at start, but this move attacks the c4 pawn. And that's the main idea behind the move. Now, there's a story about Nimtsovich playing this for the first time. And his opponent didn't defend the pawn, he just played bishop g2 instantly and then and then lost the pawn. Probably uh, there's a story that he pretended that it was a gambit, but that doesn't really work. So if bishop g2 and, and bishop takes c4, this has actually been played uh, like 15 times on, on, on high level, like on master and grandmaster level. And now knight f to d2 or queen to c2 is supposed to be a refutation, but after after bishop to d5, you don't even have c, uh, e4. So bishop g2 just loses a pawn. So the idea behind bishop a6 is I'm putting pressure on c4 and you have no easy way to defend it. Now, we're going to talk about Queen's Indian pawn structures before we get into the theory. But if you uh, remember uh, what I said in the introductory video, the whole strategy behind the Queen's Indian is fighting for light squares in the center with your pieces. So namely with your f6 knight and with your bishop, and the key squares are going to be the e4 square and the d5 square. Black's strategy is going to be preventing the move e4. Unlike other modern and hypermodern openings in the Queen's Indian, you don't allow white to create a broad center. Allowing e4 for free would be a mistake. So one of the ideas behind the move bishop a6 is to force you to defend c4, I'm going to force you to a concession. You're going to have to play a strange move. So either queen c2, queen b3, queen a4, b3, or knight b2, d2. Uh, neither of these moves is really good. Also, e3, I shouldn't even mention that that isn't even played. It just creates a giant hole, defends your pawn with the bishop, which means that you played g3 for nothing and that you weakened all the light squares around your king. So e3 is not even an option. But all other moves, b3 being the main line, and all queen moves and knight b to d2 uh, are a slight concession. Why? Well, firstly, white wants to have his knight on c3. He wants to control both key squares in the center, e4 and d5. Secondly, you don't really want to move your queen on move 5. You would like to play bishop g2 and castle and play knight c3 and play bishop f4 or bishop g5. You don't want to be making queen moves. Now, on the other hand, the pawn can easily be defended, fine. And there's an upside to each of these moves by white. So, for example, the move knight b to d2 introduces the idea of e4. So, if black plays too quickly with c5, which is a move you would like to play, then e4 is a possibility. So, for example, you take on d4 and e5, and this is a line which is very sharp. So, there are options like that. So, the move bishop a6 
first first purpose is sort of weaken the control of the of the main squares and in some variations of the of the queen's indian after bishop b7 for example white will be able to play the move d5 because as you can see let's say the knight comes to c3 now d5 is already protected enough times so by playing the move bishop a6 black is virtually playing against the move d5 okay before we get into the theory i want to talk about pawn structures in the queen's indian which are important for understanding the main lines so we will we will have a look at the thematic pawn structures there are going to be seven of them i'm going to talk about each briefly so uh, here we have the most basic pawn structure the starting position of the queen's indian there are a couple of things black could play for and i'm going to explain each uh, different setup or uh, change in the nature of the position uh, separately. So firstly, um, black is playing for light squared control, so for the control of this diagonal. Getting activity could be achieved either with f5 and going for a kingside attack, by playing c5 and, pre and breaking uh, white's center, by playing d5 and trying to expand and challenge the c4 pawn, by playing both d5 and c5 and trying to establish a broad center yourself or by simply playing a setup with d6 and a5 and trying to prevent white from playing the move c5 for example you have a queen on e7 uh, you have a knight on d7 uh, you have a rook on, uh, a rook on e8 a rook on b8 or an a8 and you're basically with a pawn on d6 you're preventing the move c4 and with the pawn on a5 you're preventing the move b4 and you can sort of lock down the structure and then have enough time to play on the king side and that's actually a very normal setup with a pawn on d6 pawn on a5 pawn on f5 going for a king side attack now there are two different uh, versions of the queen's indian which you could go for one of them is a queen's indian with a pawn on d5 and the, the second one is the Queen's Indian with the pawn on d6. And it may not seem like a big difference, but whenever you think about moving your d-pawn, bear in mind that that's going to decide the nature of the position because where you put your pawn will determine what white should be doing. By moving your pawn to d6, you are protecting the e5 square, which is the most important square from which white launches his attacks. So once you play the move d5, white almost in instantly plays the move knight e5 and this is going to be one of the best ideas for white uh, in return of course white has already committed to d4 so black always has ideas of knight e4 and by playing a setup with d6 you leave yourself with more options and of course white has less chances in the attack however this is less ambitious okay then the next setup we're going to have a look at is a setup with hanging pawns and this is something I've played several times in tournament games and this often occurs out of the Queen's Indian and since I started playing the Queen's Indian in real games uh, I've had problems with two types of positions one of them is the, the position with hanging pawns and the other one is the position with an isolated Queen's pawn which is the next setup we are going to be looking at so the Queen's pawn setup occurs out of this position where uh, black is playing the queen's indian with the pawn on d5 and then later on breaks the center with c5 as well and then we have an exchange uh, we have d takes c or c takes d for example c d e d and then d c b c and you have and you have your hanging pawns and now this is both a strength and a weakness at the same time black is going to use the e4 square for his knight black is going to try to launch an attack along the e-file, probably plays the queen on b6, use this diagonal, and try to play actively. Of course, at the same time, white could try to play knight c3 to a4, rook to c1, queen to c2, and try to simply win the c-pawn. One thing you should know about hanging pawns in these positions is that whenever one of them moves forward, you better have a good reason, because moving one pawn creates a ton of holes. Then the isolated queen's pawn would happen from the same position, but you don't you don't take bc you take bishop takes c5 and in the queen's indian you will have this sophie's choice in most positions so again you want to attack from this position you have an isolated queen's pawn the position is not as dynamic pawn wise as the hanging pawns but it's still an aggressive position which requires you to play actively so again if you want to play positional chess in the queen's indian then setups with d6 are for you if you want to play aggressive chess, then d5 setups are for you because they are most likely going to end up with hanging pawns or isolated queen's pawns. Okay, the next setup, which is very important for the 
for the Queen's Indian is the hedgehog setup. Most likely white is going to have a pawn on e4. So this is going to resemble a Maroxy by Sicilian where white is fianchettoed. And we get that from the same position we were looking at, uh, but without d5, black plays the move c5 and an exchange happens on c5 or on d4 excuse me so pawn takes d4 or pawn takes c5 and then white is going to black is going to play a6 to prevent knight b5s from coming in and your strategy is going to be bishop b7 queen a8 rook c8 put pressure along the diagonal and play a normal hedgehog and the final pawn structure is the structure with the open b file where in the same position we saw previously you don't take with the piece if an exchange on c5 happens you take with the b pawn and then your strategy is going to be play d6 solidify the center play queen b6 rook b8 put pressure on the b file so the queen's indian and this these positions are not applicable only to the main line but you have to know these pawn structures to play the the queen's indian and since the main line is the most likely variation that's going to be on the board i wanted to go go through this now okay now let's let's go through the theory so let's get the opening again so d4 knight of six c4 e6 knight of three b6 the queen is indian g3 white plays the main line and we play the move bishop a6 now we can defend several different ways as white the main line is the, is the move b3 simply uh simply defending defending the pawn now in this position, uh, b3 is the least concession, I believe, and you defend your pawn by by not moving one of your pieces, which doesn't really want to move. Now in this position, we have two options as black. Uh, the second most popular is simply playing bishop b7 and saying your pawn on b3 is a weakness, and that's an improvement for me, actually, because now you're going to fianchetto your bishop, but after white plays the move bishop to g2, we now play bishop b4 check. And again, you, you can either play knight to d2, which you don't want to play because you undefend the d5 square, or you can play bishop to d2, which doesn't make sense because you, you wanted to fianchetto, you wanted to play b3, bishop b2. So so that's, that's bishop b7. I'm only going to be recommending moves for black, there will be many more options for black than what I show you here. I am going to be showing all options for white because this this I want to cover as an opening for black. So instead of bishop b7, I would recommend the move bishop b4 check. I believe that's just more active. And again, without moving your bishop, uh, which you can do later and you most likely will do later, uh, you provoke one of the pieces to a bad square. Now bishop d2 is by far the more the most popular. And now once the bishop came to d2, you obviously don't have the option to play a5 because your bishop is still on a6, but you play the move bishop e7. And now the thing is, this bishop is very bad on, on d2, it's not doing anything, the bishop would like to be here. The knight is not going to c3 because the bishop then has no room, so white is not going to play bishop c1, bishop b2. Instead white is going to play bishop c3 and he's going to play knight d2. So that's an improvement for black. And this is a very thematic idea for the Catalan, for the Bogo Indian, and playing this bishop b4 check and then coming back is, is very thematic. Okay, so bishop g2. And now you, you can play bishop b7, uh, although that's not such a good move. I mean, it is a good move, but it's not, in my opinion, the best move. By far the main line is the move c6. And here is why. Firstly, you don't allow any discoveries. Secondly, you're preparing the move d5, which white has now weakened. How did white weaken d5? Well, he developed his bishop to d2, blocking his queen. He only has one defender. He only has a pawn. Look at your defenders. So you are going to play d5. There's nothing white can do about it. He cannot just give up a million pawns with d5 himself. So bishop c3 and now d5. And in this position, most people find that black is more than okay, that black is equal, and that black has no issues. You're going to be playing uh, a very easy game from here. I believe that black's plan is easy. The only problem square you will have is the e5 square. Other than that, I don't really see a way for white to, to claim a huge advantage. Okay, so knight e5, fine. You get into the position. You play knight f to d7 because you don't want to lose your c6 pawn. And now white doesn't have anything better but to take. f4 would be pretty suicidal. It's way too early for that and it would weaken the position too much. So white takes. 
fine knight takes and now knight to d2 getting the other knight into f3 and e5 which basically restricts the black knight and makes it sort of stuck to d7 but those of you who play the karokan or the semislav or any c6 e6 defenses for black will be very familiar with the e5 weakness fine black castles white castles rook to c8 and now the whole problem uh, about playing this line is that it, in the end it does allow e4. How does it allow e4? Well, we are basically playing a semi-slav setup now. We are no longer playing a Queen's Indian. We are playing a semi-slav with b6 and bishop a6, which is slightly weird, but it's still a semi-slav in which uh, white has fianchettoed. That means that e4 is supported enough. We don't have a bishop on b7, so white plays the move e4. Okay, and this is the critical point in this main line after b3. This is basically the position where you have to start studying. And remember, when I started playing the Queen's Indian, this is actually the position I was trying to focus on. And here you have two options. You can either play b5 or c5. I would recommend the move c5, simply, uh, simply breaking the center. b5 is a bit more popular. You can also take d4 or dc4, but b5 and c5 are considered to be the main moves. Uh, again, most games from here on end in a draw, about 75% on, on Grandmaster level, uh, because this has been very heavily analyzed, and because there is no great chances for counterplay for either side, but it's still a very interesting position. Okay, so c5, I believe, is the most principled way to play. And now white breaks the center open, e takes d5, of course, e takes d5, and now d takes c5, d takes c5, uh, excuse me, b takes c5, or d takes c4. Uh, whoa, whoa, excuse me. I'm sort of losing my internet connection, so excuse me for that. I'll try to connect to my phone if I manage to find it. Okay, wait. So e takes d5, e takes d5, d takes c5, and d takes c4 is the line that's played most commonly and now this is just a variation which you can learn but you don't have to it's more important to understand what's going on in this position and that's that the center the central ten tension has been released and that the position is becoming simpler which is why most games tend to end in a draw there is no central tension the pawn structure is going to be symmetrical both sides have two bishops and a knight and therefore reduced material shouldn't give either side any serious winning chances Okay, but the game is still very interesting. For example, c6 is the main move, c takes b3. Now, if, if you take my knight, uh, I'm going to take your bishop with my rook. Okay, so rook e1, b2, bishop takes b2, knight c5. A very interesting position in which, as I said, most likely going to end in a draw. Okay, now uh, the alternatives to b3... Uh, are queen moves and one knight move. So after bishop a6, you have to do something to defend. So you can play queen c2, queen b3, queen a4, or you can play knight b2, d2. Let's look at knight b2, d2 first, uh, if my internet allows it. Wait, I'll try to reconnect to something else. I don't know what's going on. Excuse me. Okay, so... Yeah, I'll just talk about the positions briefly until I manage to reconnect. Uh, so, queen moves, I think, are slightly more principled, even though most of them will allow a tempo to be gained. Uh, because the knight really does belong on c3, and moving the queen is a sort of temp temporary inconvenience, but moving the knight is a long-term concession, and it's really... It's really not possible to bring the knight back easily. Okay, I have to get my phone and connect to my phone network. Sorry for this. Okay, yeah, I'm not home. So my internet is giving me headaches. And basically no connections I'm able to, to connect to are any good. And also my phone network is just dreadful. So basically I'm preparing the videos in Leach's studies and without internet I'm unable to change chapters. So yes, it seems to be working now. Okay, we have reconnected. Okay, let's let's look at knight to d2. 
Okay, so knight b to d2. Uh, as a response to, to bishop a6, simply defends the c4 pawn. And now we have a couple of options. Again, we can return to b7 saying, fine, we provoked you, and now well, let's just go back. You can also play bishop b4, pinning the knight. You can play c5 or you can play d5. Now, I would recommend the move bishop b7. I think that's simply the most principled, getting the bishop back to the best diagonal and saying, well, you are not controlling d5. Okay, white plays bishop g2. And now, you can play sensibly with bishop e7, or you can play aggressively. And I would recommend playing sensibly. So the aggressive move is c5. There's a problem with that. As we said, the move knight to d2 is a concession, but it does allow e4. So if you try to break open the position too early with c5, white is going to continue with e4. And now after c takes d4, white has a couple of options. He could play e5, he could play knight d4, or he could simply castle. And after castles, which is the main and probably the best move, you play something like d6, they play knight d4, you play knight b to d7. This is now a Maroxi bind versus the hedgehog, the, the structure we were looking at, which I don't find too pleasant. I don't think this is the, bet, the best you could get out of a Queen's Indian. So against knight b to d2, I would recommend bishop b7 and bishop to g2, and not c5, but bishop e7, playing slowly. So white castles, you castle, uh, they play queen c2, and now you play d5. And we get into the position where you play either for an IQP or with, with hanging pawns, so cd5, ed5, knight e5, and c5. And now, of course, white is going to take. Whenever you play c5 in this position, white is going to take. So now you get to choose. I mean, this will come down to whatever you have most experience with. I usually take with the b-pawn, and they play for hanging pawns. Uh, you can look at my game, uh, Željko Matic, Stjepan Tomic, which was played in Zagreb Open. I think it was round 5. I drew the game, he was 21-50, very interesting game, which I was much better, I could have won had I not been a coward. So I took with the b-pawn in this position for black, he, he had a slightly different structure, I think his bishop was on f4. So yeah, you, you get to choose, b takes is slightly more principled, and now you play chess. Now you play chess. They said, be careful with moving your pawns forward because, for example, if you played d4 here, then knight c4 simply blocks in your entire position. So you, and not to mention that you lose the bishop. Okay. Still very theoretical. And if you want to study the Queen's Indian, focus on this position. Okay, and now we get to the queen moves. Okay, queen b3 is the first move I would like to talk about and because this is a very provocative move. So... Black responds with knight c6, always. And after knight b to d2, which had to be played, so you had to play queen b3 and knight b2, because black has knight a5, so you're going to have to move your queen again. So after knight a5, the queen can either move to d1 or to c3, or to a4, excuse me. And now after c, uh, queen c3, you now play c5. And I believe that black's position is perfect here. So after d c5, you take with the b pawn. Now you have the pawn structure we talked about, where you have pressure on the b file. This is just a very pleasant position. You don't necessarily have to play d5 or d6. You can simply continue developing. And you have allowed the move e4. But still, I think black has achieved a lot. Look at the d4 square. Look at the d4 square. Getting your knight to d4 should be your main priority in these queen b3 positions. So e5, knight e4, you trade off, there's no alternative, take, take, bishop g2, and now your bishop is not in trouble, you can play knight e6 because you can always trade. And what do you want to trade? You want to trade this bishop for this knight. Why? Because you want to weaken d4. So whenever he castles, defending the bishop, you should... I would personally just consider snapping the knight off, but you don't have to. The theory says rook b8, getting the rook away from the diagonal and putting pressure on the b file. Rook e1 and now bishop f3, bishop f3, knight d4. And whoever thinks there's something wrong with this position, I don't think is correct. I mean, all Sicilians that tend like this tend to be really good for white, for black, excuse me. This is basically a Sicilian pawn structure with the pawn on c5 and a very pleasant position. Okay, then queen c2 is sort of the least ambitious move. Against queen c2, I think c5 is just the most principled way to play. Uh, and here, with c5, you're basically forcing white to give up a pawn and have a ton of initiative. So, 
if white plays queen c2, that means that he is playing for a fighting game and you have to be careful. So after the move uh, c5, white has to play d5 and that's a pawn sacrifice. So now e d5, c d5 and bishop b7, there is no way to defend the pawn. And he plays bishop g2, you play knight takes d5. So black has won a pawn. But watch what happens. Black is not going to castle easily. So white does bishop e7, rook d1, attacking the knight. Knight c6. Of course, if rook takes knight, then knight b4 wins the rook. So queen a4, knight f6, knight h4, putting pressure, threatening to play knight f5, so g6, bishop h6, no castling, bishop f8, fine, trading everything off. King to g7, queen to f4, and queen to e7. And, and white pieces are sort of active, but black has a pawn. And if you manage to play d5, d4, then it's going to be a very clean pawn up. Another downside is, of course, that your bishop is pinned, but again, you have a pawn. So against queen c2, I would recommend going for this c5, d5, winning the pawn and just trying to survive the attack. And queen a4 is the second most popular move, against which, again, I think c5 is is a very good move. Uh, white should now simply continue development and the inclusion of these two moves, it's not really clear who that helps. For the moment, black's B pawn, uh, D pawn excuse me, is pinned, but I don't think that's such a big deal. So bishop g2, bishop b7, dc5, bc5, always take with the B pawn when, you're, when your pawn is not on d5 yet, because th this is not a concession, this is just a pawn getting towards the center and it can be defended. So castles, bishop e7, knight c3 castles, and rook d1. There are other options for white here, but there are bishop f4, bishop g5. And now again, we have the pawn structure with the semi-open b file, in which you just have to put pressure. Firstly, queen b6 is a very useful move, defending the bishop, putting pressure on b2, so something like bishop f4 would be punished. Uh, and, yeah, not here, excuse me, bishop f4 here, and you don't get to take on b2. Wait... I'm actually not sure. I was looking at positions like this, uh, just thinking about the b2 pawn, but here I'm not sure. Let's see. Queen takes b2. Wait, what's the problem? I think after I take the knight and you play rook c1, I think that's just it, that I lose my queen. So I think that's it. And also I could probably just take your bishop as well. But I think you lose your queen and your bishop. Let's just check. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't prepare this. Okay, so rook b1, queen c3, and rook c1, or, well, what's wrong with rook c1? Ah, okay, I have bishop c6. Okay, excuse me. So just take the bishop. Okay. So bishop f4 is playable here. Sometimes it's not. Okay. Uh, rook d8, defending the pawn. Uh, rook to d2, and now d6. And now we are playing this setup with the pawn on d6, which, as I said, whenever the b-file is open, reinforcing e5 is a good idea. And now rook a to d1, white is going to double his rooks, you play h6 restricting the bishop. And now your plan is going to be g5, g4, h5, and believe it or not, start attacking. And if you want to win in the Queen's Indian, you have to play actively. It seems like a defensive defense, but it's really versatile. And I think that the richness of this position comes from the fact that there are seven thematic pawn structures and types of center which you have to know that's incredible i don't i couldn't name many defenses that could end up with hanging pawns isolated queen's pawn the hedgehog and pressure on the b file and very complex center with no pawns traded off so the queen's indian main line is very versatile and i think it's going to teach you positional chess dynamic chess and strategy much better than than most other defenses okay sorry if the if the video on the main line was very complicated it was supposed to be because it's a complicated uh, it's a complicated position. I didn't want to get you too deep into theoretical variations. I wanted to focus on, on the understanding of the position. I hope I managed at least a bit. Let me know what you think. I uh, hope you found this useful and uh, see you later. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.